Greetings and welcome to my studio. I'm Stephen Reeves and I'm going to show you how to do a basic pencil drawing and to give, and give you some really good uh, tips to help your drawing in general. As you see, I have a large drawing pad. I have taken a mat board and created my space, my individual space right here on this larger area. This is important because I've already uh, planned out if I were to crop this, where this would be cropped and cut. I was really happy with the end result and I want to frame it, um, matting and frame it. So um, I'm using several different pencils, uh, at least I have several different pencils. You may only have a 2H or a 2B or a B or HB pencil. Um, it's important to know how to use your materials and in regard to the pencils that I'm using today, um, the 8B, the number 8B, uh, I like to think of the B as in black because this line, and I'm just moving, going back and forth, see how dark that is, and I can also use the width of this lead um, to make a wider line, as opposed to just this pencil, which is an HB, uh, excuse me, a 2H. Uh, and it's never, no matter how hard I press and, and go over it, it'll never get as dark as this. However, with depending on how we press, how hard I press, I can make very light lines and I can make it go very dark to the extent that the pencil will allow. That's important to know because if you only have one pencil, you want to be aware of how, how you're starting and how hard you're pressing. Uh, and let's talk about the, uh, the placement. The placement of our object is called the composition. The composition, it could be here, 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 here. And a traditional composition uh, would dictate to us or tell us that I'm not going to have it too close to the top or too close to the bottom or where it's going to look like it's um, restricted and, uh, uh, and odd. As humans, we like things that are balanced. And I'm also going to think about my object is going to be on a table. Now, where would my table line be? I wouldn't put it in the middle because our eye, it's going to look funny. Um, I would put it probably lower. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger than, um, so I'm going to make it huge, but I'm going to make it a little bit larger than actual is. And I'm just going to draw an apple. And this apple, I'm going to say, is going to be about maybe here, the bottom of it, and the top of the apple is going to be there. It is not in the dead center, like a bullseye. It's just a little lower than center, but you have a little more space above than you do below. And I'm going to do what's called blocking it in. And blocking it in means that I'm just going to, to uh, place it. I'm going to use a lot of lines. I'm going to say that, well, with the apple that I'm, I'm drawing, and it would be good to have an actual apple, and I set the apple up, and I look at it from life. Drawing from life is quite important. Um, however, if I don't have that, uh, I could use a magazine, a book, um, or I'm using a tablet over here, and I have a photograph of the apple on the tablet. And so I'm just going to do light lines. I'm, I'm not pressing like really hard like that. If I do that to start out, I may have to do a lot of erasing um, if I'm not happy with where I, I put something. So if I do a lot of lines like this, if I say that this apple um, is about this big, uh, it's kind of bulbous, you know, the rounded, the round part of the apple, the biggest part is probably just above center here. Uh, and I'm just gonna, just gonna place this apple. 
I might even make it a little bit larger than what I started out with that line. But these are just, it's called blocking it in. How wide is it going to be? How tall is it going to be? And the actual placement. Uh, I might also uh, decide that I'm going to put the, the table line is going to be about there. And I'm using light lines. I'm not pressing too hard. Uh, because this is the beginning. Uh, later, when I'm happy with where I'm going to, where I'm putting things, I will press harder. So when I get all these lines going, and I may even move that down a little bit, um, I can have my erasers, and I have three erasers here. This is called a gum eraser, um, and you'll see see this. Um, the eraser that you see, the eraser particles, that's very much like what we have when we are working in school with a pencil. And I'm going to, instead of using my fingers, I'm going to use a paper towel because our fingers have, has, our fingers have oil in them, so I don't want to smear it. Now granted, my fingers are not real oily today, so I could do that, but be aware of that when you're working. Um, this is also, it's just a triangular uh, shaped. It's similar to that, but it's a little different. It does have the same uh, property that it will come off, uh, but it's not quite the same as the gum eraser. And then I have what is uh, called a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser is one that I warm up in my hand. If I'm going to work um, in pencil, or charcoal and pastel, I will put this in my front pocket so it's against my, my upper part of my leg and it's going to get warm. And see how it's very flexible? Um, it also stretches. And so depending on where I'm working, this right here, I could just take that and press and see how it picks up some of that. But I don't want to put that back down because it will smear it. So then I'm just going to move it. I'm going to move this around like that. And I may pick up some more and move it and pick up some more like that. So I can do a swipe and keep kneading it. It's almost like you're kneading it like dough in a way. But this is called the kneaded eraser. And I like those. They're all, they each have their use. But I'm going to keep that in my hand so it stays warm and, and flexible and usable. So right now I've started. Uh, we have our um, the top of the apple, the bottom of the apple, and I want to. Uh, I don't want this to end up looking like a tomato. Uh, what will help that this particular apple? Because some apples, I could say, well, I'm going to intentionally trim in this bottom part a little bit more than my photograph shows. Um, that we have those areas that come down at a shape like this of a lot of apples, not all of them, but some of them. A gala apple is a little bit more rounded this way. And the bottom of the, of the apple, if you notice, ha has uh, these little, almost like feet. It's like the little parts of it that come down like that, uh, and I may just bring this down a little bit, uh, and then up like that. You know, just to show that, um, I will later, I'll come back and I'll, I'll remove those extra lines, the ones that I don't, that I'm not happy with, and so I'm, gonna, I'm going to figure out exactly what, which of these lines do I like most? Um, do I want to make something taller? wider, shorter, and I'm going to trim that in a little bit there uh, and say, okay, overall this is not bad. Uh, I could change it at the bottom. Um, I think I'm going to leave it that way, but now I'm going to zero in on, on the actual lines because I have all these several lines here. And now I'm going to emphasize it a little bit more. I'm still not going to press super hard with a line like that just yet. Okay? I am going to... I'm doing several lines, but I'm, I'm creating this edge of the apple. Just 
same thing on this side. Yeah, overall, that's not a bad shape. It's not perfect, but that's okay. Um, if you get a, buy a bag of apples, you can have all different shapes in them, though they will be similar. Now, right now, you may notice that this line that was my first top of the apple line looks kind of like the, in, the part that where the stem would be, but that's not where it's going to be because that's not what that line is. So right now... Um, I'm going to place that. I was about to erase it. But if I were to erase that line, let's say that I do something and I don't like it, if I erase this line first, and I can do that, I can erase that line first, before um, correcting it, if I erase that line first, erase all these because I know that that's... I've set my line there. I'm going to take this, just a little bit of wipe off there. Is what if I came back up there and I did the same thing? Uh, so, a good rule of thumb is to do your correction first. And I think that that's, that's not bad right here with my, um, my reference. That's not bad. And I'll also know that um, the stem is going to come up. It's kind of wide. It's going to come up just to, above that. Um, kind of like that. And I want to have it come above this line. Um, Here's a good rule of thumb to think about and to put in your lockbox memory is the top of this stem right here, if I put that stem right here lining up with the edge of the apple, it's going to physically, it's going to look funny. And it also is not going to look balanced. It's going to give us this weird things in our eyes, the way we see it. So instead of having it just touching like that, have a space between it or an overlap. So instead of, instead of just touching, let's have a space between something or an overlap. And this is the overlap, okay? I can also, since I know where that's going to be, I'm going, I can erase... The line that went across. So I know this is where my my stem is going to be. I'm not going to get do the detail right yet, um, but that's essentially the start and the placement. Thinking about the edges and things that line up or come uh, just up to touch something. Uh, some artists call that refer to that as the kiss. That if this was just touching there, it's just kissing it, it's just coming up to touch it. Um, so right now, I don't like the shape of this. I really am not happy with that. It is very much like my reference photo. But let's see what I might do to that to restate my drawing here. I'll clean that up a little bit. I think what I could do is I could make this one a bit more pronounced, move this down a little, like that. Maybe that will look better. Let's check it out. So I, I did my correction. I'm going to erase what I don't like. And say, okay, yeah, I think that's better. I do. Yes, so that's good. Um, that to here, and roughly the same place. I don't have to do my line all the way across. I could if I wanted to, 
um, it's not a necessity. Actually, that's where the it, that it's sitting on a plane, and the plane of this apple is right here. It means the the space that it is touching that plane, and then of course the table is here. So this essentially, uh, with our eye, automatically reads this as a table or perhaps the floor. Um, and now, when I've got that, I'm going to look at that and say, okay, so um, what about filling it in, shading it in, coloring it in, all the different terms that we use of putting on a color or a value. This is monochromatic because it's just using graphite. Um, and I'm I'm going to think about, um, I think it's important to think about, where is our light source coming from? The light source from my photograph of this is, it's coming really kind of like that. It's, it's kind of above. Uh, if it's in our house, it would be probably above. And so all the dark and the shadow will be under here. And depending on if it's coming from this way, the shadow would go back. If it's really coming from above, it would only be very close here. So it's incredibly important to think about where is the light source coming from? Um, is it uh, from here, from the back? And hopefully that we only have one main light source that we don't have we do have a we have a reflected light often on objects that the light is coming down it's hitting the apple here it's also this light is hitting the table and depending on how light the table surface is it will bounce some light back up and that's called reflected light so i'm thinking about all those things because in our drawing one of the things that is paramount is to have a strong sense of light and dark. Uh, you may have seen drawings or paintings that all the color and the value of the color is the same. What is value of color or value of tone or shade? And value is the light and dark of color. Um, give an example. Let's see if I can give an example here. Um, a good example, well, I'll just show this. This is this is a painting of a dog I just did this uh, this week, uh, this past week. The blue here is lighter than the blue here. So the value of this blue is a lighter value than the value of this blue. And it's Im important to, to know the difference and to see the difference. Now, in a drawing that is in graphite, is in black and white, essentially in shades of gray, is our paper serves as the white or the lightest value, and our pencil serves as the darkest value, depending on how, how hard we press and how much we fill in. Hopefully that makes sense. So value is the light and dark of color. Uh, and we can also say the light and dark of gray from gray to black or gray to white. So with this apple and the placement, happy with the placement, I want to now start shading it in. Uh, I'm going to think about uh, where that light's coming from up here. And I'm going to lightly put uh, where my light is striking so I don't color in any of this. And I'm going to leave it mostly um, up a little higher, mostly white, mostly just the paper white. Um, and I'm going to, going to come across here, may come to there. I'm going to hit my, that again for my photograph. And... I want to think about where is that? Where is the light source coming from? As I start to fill this in, uh, it's good to think about 
Well, how do I do that? When we are children, it's so easy to do this. If you remember when you're cray you know, using crayons or filling something in, this is a very erratic, and it's a, it is a way of filling something in. However, it is not uniform. It, is, um, it isn't really in control. We're not doing anything really in control or precise. So here, I can take and do just individual strokes. I'm just doing one stroke at a time, and I'm going to go to the left. And see how uniform this is? It isn't perfect, but it's rather uniform. It's mostly the same value going across. And I can go to the right here. And I'm this is the same pencil lead as that, but I'm not pressing as hard. And if I wanted to make this darker, I could go over it. I can also press harder. And then as I move to the left, I'm going to slowly press less hard. So there's a gradual from dark to light. Um, also, it is a good rule of thumb when you are drawing something or painting something that is on a table, like this is, that's on the floor, that is on your front yard, the earth, a pond, a lake, or the ocean, and the ocean in particular that is calm, mostly calm, is if we do our strokes horizontally, if I do my strokes horizontally, that is going to appear, and it's going to help with our drawing, that it's going to appear flat, that it is not upended, that the, the table's not tilted, that the, um, the, earth, the earth is flat. Now, we know that there's, we have hills and we have mountains, etc. So the direction of our strokes makes a difference. But that's a good, a good rule of thumb to make your strokes horizontally uh, when you're working on a table or the earth. I can clean up this edge. I don't have to now, but I can clean that up and see how quickly that, that works. Um, so this, and I'm going to, I'm going to make this a bit darker back here. And I am going back and forth because I know I'm going to just keep it on that one line. I'm not going all over the place, but I'm going to emphasize that a little bit there. Okay. And so now I want to start filling in the apple. And I'm going to use the side of this. And I'm going to go in the direction that this apple is essentially up this way. I'm going to do some strokes that go like that. Notice these strokes. And because this dips in right here, I'm going to make this a little bit darker as though there may be a little bit less light right there. And, and then here, I'm going to kind of have it bow out and go out. See the stroke? It's kind of going like that. I'm going to have that this way. And back here, because I know that this edge back here is darker. It actually is in my photograph. It is much darker. Uh, I'm going to take my pencil. And I'm going to do the same. With the side of my pencil, I'm going to have it come inward that way. Stroke going that way. Um, 
is, and I want to have that dark edge there. Um, this comes to here. Uh, I'm going to move this around like that. Having that dark edge back here also gives me depth. I can. And then in here, I want to have some shadow in here. Still doing individual strokes, but I want to also be aware of how heavy I'm pressing. That. And while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and and set the stem and the stem and what I is is dark there is no hardly any light on the stem at all so I'm going to intentionally fill that in with a lot of straight uh, individual lines and then a few that go back and forth especially right there okay now uh, being conscious of of my time here I want to emphasize my dark especially with I'm going to do a real dark line there still left to right I'm going to emphasize this this shadow right there and I'm going to keep that soft I'm going to notice how I'm doing these lines these lines are going this way and they're kind of like that and then I'm going to come back here I am going to go back and forth this way, which I can do if I'm careful. I'm filling in this darkest area for the shadow right here. There. Size that edge of the apple a little bit more. Um, and you notice apples have wonderful patterns in their skin on the on the peeling, what we call the peeling there. Uh, that um, I think it's just beautiful. I can then clean up this. Little bit. I want to over here. I can clean it up there too. Clean up the edges like that. And then here. And and granted, I'm using a 2H, and I'm doing that mainly because you may not have a whole set of of, of drawing pencils. You might, if you do, uh, use a 8B or 9B or 12B or the largest number B you have for your darkest area, which would be over here. So it's really as dark as it can be, okay? Now, as I'm going along right up here, I'm using the side of my pencil and I still want to have this uh, uh, really that edge there. I want to emphasize that just a little bit and I want to put some value right across here on that and fill a little bit more in here 
a lot more in here. Maybe a little light stripe coming down this way. And maybe a little bit darker on the that side. That, and then I can use this to create that crisp light across. And I might remind myself that this is too light. It can't be as light as that because the light is, for this light source, is not all the way around. And notice because I'm doing my stroke this way, inward, it gives that nice round, round feeling, okay? Also come against that like this. And I could fit, I could work a whole lot more on this, but this gives you uh, the idea of the light and dark. And now let's just make sure that we think about the shadow. It's going to be darkest next to this apple, the object. And I'm going to do it where the light's pretty high on that. Maybe about right there. And we're going to fill that in. Fill it in a little bit darker right next to the apple. Especially right here. And we can let that blend out so slightly there. Add just a little dark to that and maybe right there. We have some soft edges, we have some harder edges. Make that ever just a little darker. A little harder. Nothing sharply edged. Um, and there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly have. And I wish you a terrific day.